Good morning, this is Kelloland on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. The man who pretended to have a bomb during a Sioux Falls bank robbery entered a guilty plea in federal court yesterday. 23-year-old Ayub Muhammad admitted to taking $200,000 from the Wells Fargo Bank on North Cliff Avenue last August. Police say he stole a customer's keys and left, but didn't get far. When officers arrived, he was still in the parking lot. Mohammed will be sentenced in June. A man serving a 25-year sentence for raping an 8-year-old child is asking a federal judge to find him not guilty in a separate case. In December of 2019, Nathan Hankins was charged with federal child pornography charges. The indictment came down just days before he was sentenced in the child rape case. Court documents say investigators found 175 illegal pictures along with four illegal videos on Hankins' phone. This week, the federal case went to trial. Hankins' attorney filed paperwork asking the judge to find him not guilty. The judge will hand down a verdict at a future date. A Texas man admits to stealing a pickup in Brookings, crashing it into an ATM in Madison, and stealing more than $30,000 worth of $20 bills. 24-year-old Alton Himes entered a guilty plea yesterday. In federal court, he's one of four Texas men who were arrested in connection with the 2021 South Dakota crime spree. Himes was convicted of a similar crime in Texas in 2019. Two serious crashes involving uninsured drivers this week is focusing new attention on a violation that police say happens too much too often. Last year alone, Sioux Falls Police issued more than 3,300 tickets for no proof of insurance. Many times it's an oversight by the driver who forgot to put the insurance card in the glove box. But even paperless cards can sometimes present a problem for drivers. They either forget the password for the app on their phone or the app itself needs to be reloaded because there's a newer version or something like that. Police have no way of knowing if you have insurance if you don't have a card with you, so it's highly unlikely you'll be able to talk yourself out of a ticket. Now let's get a check of our weather with meteorologist Scott Munt. Good morning, Scott. Going to see any snow in March? Well, that we will. You're looking forward to it, aren't you? Or are you just growing used to it? <laughs> right? Uh, we are looking at uh, snow chances. This morning we do have a couple of flurries, maybe that burst of light snow trying to move through. Temperatures today uh, below average, numbers in the 20s across eastern Kettle Land, 30s and 40s in central and western South Dakota. We do have chances for snow Sunday, mainly across northern Kettle Land. And then late next week as we do go beyond the seven-day forecast. More details with Brian coming up. Thank you, Scott. We're now officially in meteorological spring. And while we likely have a lot of winter left, the city of Sioux Falls is encouraging homeowners to start thinking about flood insurance. Urban planner Albert Smith says every home is eligible no matter where you live. One of the reasons why flood plan insurance is important is, again, it's not always covered by homeowners insurance. Typically, it's not. And that 40% of all flood insurance claims that we see on an annual basis typically occur outside what you call the high-risk areas for flood insurance. Schmidt says the city isn't overly worried about flooding so far this year, but says you never know what Mother Nature will do. With inflation still making it hard for people to make ends meet, the city of Sioux Falls is reminding homeowners of programs to help with property taxes. This is for people who are low income and elderly or disabled. First is the state assessment freeze program for the elderly and disabled. The deadline is on April 1st. Through the application, the City of Sioux Falls will figure out who is eligible for a property tax refund. People may receive up to $500 next year. It's a great program for people who might feel uh, the strain of being on a fixed income. Um, it is targeted assistance to those who need it the most. Uh, it is a way that the city has brought forward to assist those individuals uh, with, with, with their property tax and, and making sure that they can stay in their homes. The city says it's in the process of sending out refunds right now to about 400 households. Another requirement for the program is that you have to be current on property taxes. We provided links to the application on Kelloland.com. In many small towns, City Hall is one of the main landmarks. But for a community east of Brookings, that landmark is being torn down this week. 
After being deemed unsafe because of structural issues, the Aurora City Hall and Community Center closed and is now rubble. The fire department will stay where it's at for now. They need to use that building until a new one is built. It was an unfortunate situation that we had to tear it down, but again, it was, it was unsafe and it was just to where we were worried that if we let it stand, it could fall over or tear down our fire department in the process being attached. So yes, there was a lot of sentimental attachment. There was even a couple of our councilmen that had their wedding dance upstairs. and in Jones says they hope to have renderings for new buildings in the next six months and then break ground within a year. If you'd like to be part of a Chase the Ace fundraiser for the project, you can find information on their Facebook page to enter. That link is attached to this story on our website. The next drawing is tonight. And with the men's and women's basketball championships a day away, our Summit League coverage is well underway. Coming up tonight is our Kelloland Summit League tournament preview show. We'll preview the four matchups featuring the SDSU and USD men and women. We'll also break down the brackets and look at the new tournament format. That airs tonight at 6.30 on Kello TV. That's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Brian? All right, let's get to future cast hour by hour. Some flurries this morning in the central temperatures, of course, coldest in Aberdeen, but we are going to continue to rebound through the single digits above zero and eventually end up in the low 20s. Rapid City this afternoon, low 40s. We're expecting a good dose of sun in the south central. Sioux Falls area is kind of an in-between zone where we can break some clouds up. Certainly we can get uh, some rays of sun here, and that would be helpful. Any periods of that uh, in the forecast as we kind of deal with these low level cloud issues. And that can be kind of a typical talking point in March, especially with all the environmental conditions we have with the snow on the ground and those kind of things. Now tonight, tomorrow, there's a little patch of light snow in the Black Hills that might uh, impact us in Pine Ridge and some of those southwestern counties tomorrow. Uh, eventually, we might even give this a little st uh, stock into our Saturday forecast for Sioux Falls. It may end up giving us some clouds. A, a snow forecast? No, not really. We're not going to go probably to that level at this point. But I would say Saturday is an example here. 30s east, 40s central and west, which is pretty fair weather for the first weekend of March. We'll take that. Now, Sunday is looking a little busier. We've got a pattern map here to kind of show you the building blocks of this. This is uh, the big view tomorrow. Notice we're missing a storm. Yep, that's a miss to our south. That's all still in the forecast, but not for Kelloland. Then we're going to watch this jet stream, this big trough coming out of California. You've been hearing all about the precipitation in California and the snow. They're not done yet. We're probably going to see more in this pattern. And then a piece of this is going to break loose into parts of South Dakota. The northern half probably stands a chance of some accumulating snow on Sunday. Exact placement of this into North Dakota and central Minnesota. we got to iron those details out. But it could be a surprisingly warm day in Nebraska and Iowa on Sunday. It's March after all. We've got to expect these back and forth uh, ranges. My main thought next week, keep an eye on this trough. The more this thing continues to spin and push, we've got probably a couple of rounds of some accumulating snow, and it's a fairly large area to watch. You've got rain all the way down to Texas and Oklahoma. You've got some kind of a transition zone in between, probably to our south. And I do think the likelihood is we are going to pick up our next more significant chances of snow. How significant, you ask? Well, let's bring up an interesting little probability chart or map here, if you will. This is our six-inch threshold the next 10 days. If you add all the days up and you look at the averages, we're already in a, well, 40 to 50% range of uh, chances of snow, of six inches of snow in that time frame. Now, it doesn't mean it's all at once, but it certainly could be. It's March. I think we all know that this is a month that you have to stay up on the weather, and we'll be guiding you through those changes coming up. Today, though, pretty quiet. No mention of any uh, significant snow at all. In fact, tonight should be just mainly partly to mostly cloudy. Not quite as cold. 16 Sioux Falls. The seven-day forecast. 30s are back for the weekend. In fact, it looks like chances of snow are coming on in line here by Sunday for Sioux Falls. A chance, I would even say at this point, there could be a little rain mixed in. But uh, at this point, Aberdeen, I'd kind of feature you a little bit more on Sunday. 
Notice our colder weather too building in starting day six and day seven. And that also will be part of that whole pattern change. It's not just some snow. We're going to have to deal with cold weather. And we're going to be probably at least 20 degrees below normal by the end of the seven day. I know you want spring, but not so fast. Check out details online at Kelloland.com.